Hello, church. My name is Brad, and I'm joined by Mary and Jason, and we're happy just to be here and worshiping with you. Thanks for joining us. We spend this time together. Let's just worship our Lord. Sing of his praise.
majesty praise forever to the king of kings praise the father praise the son praise the Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. friends, my name is Danny Liebarger and I am one of our pastors here. And I want to thank you for being here and being in worship with us as we continue to worship and to celebrate and to sit in the presence of a God who deeply loves us, is deeply for us and is all around us. And as we prepare to continue in worship, I just want to say thank you again for being here. It takes a lot of courage to step into a new place of worship, especially if this is your first time in church in a long time. And we want to create a way to be hospitable, to welcome you, to even give you a gift for being here in worship. And so if you'll see on the screen, you can text new to that number. Let us know that you're here. We would love to give you a gift and just say thank you for being here and being in worship with us today. And if you're a regular, you can actually text regular to that same number. Let us know you're here so we know that you're worshiping with us. We can know how best to stay connected and walk alongside you during this season of our life in ministry together. And I also want to just thank those of you that have continued to partner with us financially. We've been able to do a lot of really creative and new ministry through the generosity of our congregation. We thank those of you that have continued to partner with us and those that have even taken a step inward to do it for the first time. And if maybe that's you and you're looking to continue or even start giving with us, you can actually do that through our app online or even just by mailing in a check. We want to thank you that are walking with us in that way and invite those who are considering it to take that first step with us here today. But friends, before we head back into a time of worship through song, continue to prepare our hearts to hear God's word. I'll invite you to go with me to the Lord in a word of prayer. 
Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for this time that we just get to continue to worship in your presence. God, we pray that you continue to prepare our hearts, open our ears and our eyes. God, open all of who we are so that we can hear your word. And not just hear it, God, but let it transform us. Let us become vessels that live and breathe for you. And so God, let your word rest on our hearts, challenge us, push us, prod us to be people that look like your son, Jesus, here and now. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It was grace. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. In grace, my fear. Relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior. Ransom me like a flood, his mercy reigns unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon all like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who calls me here below will be forever mine will be forever Forever mine. Lord, as we come to worship you today, we just thank you for the grace that sometimes we don't we don't deserve, but you give freely. A gift that we can't earn, a gift that we can't work for. And we just thank you for that. For that gift of grace in our lives whatever that looks like. We praise you for that, God. We praise you for your amazing grace. God, as we come and listen to your word, help us to be open, help our ears to hear, and our heart to know that you are our God. 
Send your spirit upon us, Lord, as we listen. We ask this in your name, Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. There was a game we used to play in youth group as a way of introducing ourselves to one another and kind of finding out some fun facts about each other. And it went something like this. My name is John, and I'm going on a journey, and I'm taking with me sandwiches. And then the next person after you would say, hi, my name is Sally, and I'm taking with me a box of cookies. And this is John, and he's taking with him a box of sandwiches. And then the third person would repeat, and then so on and so on. And it was really a, a pretty good memory game if you had more than 30 people there. Uh, but it was that kind of intentionality of thinking about who you're with and how you get to know them, knowing not just their names, but some quirky things about them along the way. It's a great way to learn a name. Well, friends, my name is John, and I'm going on a journey a sacred journey, and I'm inviting you to go with me. And we're taking with us on this journey our questions. Questions we have about faith, questions we have about Jesus, questions we have about ourselves. And we're unearthing things as we go along, discovering those things and discovering answers to those questions. And we're hoping to encounter Jesus along the way, that he will be on this sacred journey with us. And that along that way, there'll be serendipity kind of moments when, when we are just able to do what the Spirit nudges us to do. And all of those things will bring transformation in our lives. That's the quest. That's the sacred journey that you and I are on called life. Oh, and on this journey, it's kind of important to know who else is on it with us. I mean, some have walked this journey before and before us, and, and they have gone on. They're no longer here. We read about their journeys in the scriptures, and we hear about them in the stories of faith that we tell to one another. And then there are some who are on the journey physically right with us right now who, who have been on it for a long time. They're seasoned. But then there are others on this journey that are seekers. They, they're just beginning. They don't even know all the questions that they have. And some, well, some have started and stopped the journey, and, and now they're on it again. And some of the folks that are on this journey with us, well, they're a little grumpy. Some that are on this journey with us are happy and, and encouraging and filled with joy. Some are a little bit whiners. You know, it's just kind of like life. And all of these folks are on this journey with us. It's important to know who's on the journey because and as you're going in this journey of life, you rub up against each other and sometimes you even rub off on each other. You know what I mean. If you've ever spent a day with somebody who all they do is, oh me, or just whine or just negative or, or just can't say anything positive at all, I, I mean, at the end of your day, you can even sound like that a little bit. Sometimes we rub off on each other in ways that are kind of fun. I mean, I always know when Denise has come home from being with their family in Minnesota, everything kind of has a don't you know kind of thing. And, and she doesn't have a bag. She has bags that she brings home with her. Now, that's just kind of fun. But there are other things that are far more serious for us. And we know that if we stay in some of those conversations or in some of those relationships that rub off on us in ways that are not always great, that our journey gets detoured. It doesn't end up going where we would like it to go. Now, we won't all be traveling with saints, and we shouldn't be traveling just with saints because none of us are all exactly saints ourselves. But we need to be thinking about how we influence each other and who's influencing us. And what is this world becoming that we are called to live in? So I was thinking about if I'm traveling with Jesus, 
Who might be on a trip with Jesus, on a journey with Jesus? And I think about who he hung out with in the scriptures, and he hung out with all kinds of unsavory folks. He hung out with folks who were broken, who folks who were sick, folks who were sinners, folks who have been rejected by others, folks who were lost, folks who were just searching and seeking for meaning, meaning in life. And, and all of them, no matter where they came from, they all had one thing in common— they were all longing for the kingdom of God. They were all longing to discover something more in their lives. Now, when we look at the journey of faith that we're on, we can all be different, and we can all have different approaches, and, and we don't all have to be perfect. We can be broken. We can be saints and sinners. We can be those folks who still need a healing and complete transformation. But what we need to identify is, am I on a journey with other people who want to see Jesus? Am I on a journey with other people who are longing for something more? something more in their own life, something more in the life of their community. Because we know that if we're on a journey with each other and we're longing for that more in Jesus, things happen. Lives are changed. And we, we end up becoming more and more like Jesus. We see this happening with Jesus and the disciples. We see it happening in the early church. And we see it particularly in this passage in the book of Acts that we come to over and over again, a passage that reminds us of what the church could be. In Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 42, we read these words, the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. And a sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many miracles and signs through the apostles, and all the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds of everyone who needed them. And every day they met together in the temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. And the Lord added daily to the community those who were being saved. Now, I hear that passage, and I, I remember a question that someone once asked after they read that question that has just stuck with me every day in my life. And that question was this, if there was once a church that existed like that, where miracles were still performed, where people were healed, where lives were changed, where God's Spirit just hovered over them, and the church grew daily those by those who were being saved. Is it possible for a church like that to still exist today? Has God stopped performing miracles? Has God stopped transforming lives? Has God stopped healing and forgiving and restoring or gifting? Not for a minute. Not for a minute. So what gives? Because I got to look around and I got to say, you know, there, there are very few churches where we would say, hey, there's miracles happening in that church. There's people's lives who are transformed every day in that church. There are people who are being healed every day in that church. I mean, we just don't talk like that. And I don't know that we even look like that. But I would say to you that you and I, we are at a pivotal moment in the life of the church we are at a pivotal moment more than just the life of the church. We are at a pivotal moment in the story of God where the door is ready to swing open and God is ready to be seen and heard and experienced in all of life. And more and more that's needed in our world. I mean, in the United States alone, there are more and more people who are no longer following Jesus than who are. 
I mean, it doesn't take a, a, a rocket scientist just to look around our own community and the number of rooftops that are going up around us and the apartment buildings that are going up, and yet there aren't new churches starting everywhere. And no denominational church is just bursting at the seams. So what gives? What gives in that moment? Is it possible? Is it possible that we're no longer traveling as closely on this journey of faith with Jesus as we ought to be? Is it possible? Is it possible we no longer look like that church described in Acts chapter 2? I mean, if we look there in Acts chapter 2, it'd be real easy for us just to say, well, here's what we have to do. And if we do these things in the magic formula and the way that they are stated right there, then boom, it will all happen again. I don't think that's the way for us to read this scripture at all. I mean, the early church, it wasn't perfect after all. They had arguments, they had divisions, they had all kinds of things they didn't agree upon. I mean, they were not perfect. But there are some key components there that reveal Jesus to us as we journey together. I would submit these kind of things. First, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, or as the message version of the Bible says, they followed a daily discipline. Now, don't get so hung up that what that means is, is that, you know, see, they read their Bibles every day, or, or don't get so hung up that they had worship at a certain time every weekend, or they had it in a certain style every week, or that they prayed for a certain number of minutes every day. Don't get hung up, don't get hung up on all those little individual quirky things. Think about what that really says to us. What it really says to us is this, they were committed to knowing who Jesus was and to doing what Jesus did. That's what it tells us. That's what the disciples taught. They gave witness to what they had seen and what they had heard. And they gave witness of what their life like was looking like as they followed Jesus. Are we thinking about becoming more and more like Jesus every day? Are we committing ourselves to walking and looking and talking and sounding like that? Or, as I shared with uh, folks in uh, Pastor Danny's hot thoughts the other night, are we more committed to being right than righteous? Now there's a thought for us, huh? These folks were on a journey with Jesus, remember? They were wanting to become like him. They were fully devoted for that. What we can glean from this passage is that, that they were committed to learning and living and loving the way that Jesus did. And second, they shared life with each other. Now, we read that passage and we, we, we really focus often on they shared food with each other, they sold possessions and made sure everybody had their needs met, they shared everything that they had kind of thing. But I'm thinking, you know, no, 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 no. In their conversations, they shared life with each other. You don't eat with folks and not know what's going on in their life. You don't pray with folks and not know what's going on in their life. You don't spend time with folks all day long and not know what's going on in their life. They didn't have private lives. They had shared life together, shared life experiences, ups, downs, ins and outs, all the things in between. They shared all of those things on their journey with each other. And in that sharing, they were able to encourage each other. They were able to change each other. They were able to make a difference in each other's lives. That was a transformation that happened there. And then as individuals were transformed, whole communities were transformed. And people could look at their lives and they could say, wow, look at that. That doesn't look like me. They're not living afraid. They're not living in their own little huddle. They're sharing all of life with each other. Who do you share life with on your journey? Who do you tell your questions and your fears and your successes and your struggles to? Who are you sharing life with right now? If we want to be this church and like the church in Acts, we got to share life with each other. And third, they demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. 
They didn't keep their life with Jesus a secret. They didn't keep the transformation that had happened within them just to themselves. They lived out their faith. The other night in my small group uh, on, that meets on Wednesday nights, uh, somebody in the group shared, and he shared that, you know, he had been at Walmart uh, the week before, and, and while he was checking out there, there was someone ahead of him that was having a tough time, and things just weren't working out, and, and finally, he turned around and looked at the guy and, uh, from my group and said, hey, just go ahead of me. Uh, if things aren't working out for me right now, you go ahead. Don't wait on me anymore. And so the guy, he, he hopped in and he was checking out and, and, and as he got done checking out, he looked around, he noticed the man was gone. He hadn't just let him in front of him. I mean, he just disappeared and his stuff was still there. And then, and then it hit him. The guy was having trouble with his credit card or ATM card one and it wasn't working. And it hit him even harder this this fella couldn't buy the few things that were there. Wouldn't even fit and didn't even fill up a full grocery sack. He just couldn't pay for it. And he'd finally just abandon it. Now the fellow from my small group said, Oh man, in that moment, he says, I just I felt terrible. My heart just broke. My heart ached. I knew that I could have helped this guy out. He didn't have much. I could have taken care of that. It had been no problem. So he said, I looked around, couldn't see him anywhere. I, I hurried out to the parking lot. I got out in the parking lot, couldn't see him anywhere in the parking lot. He says, and my heart was just breaking. And I knew, I knew that I had missed an opportunity. And so he said, I put my groceries in my car and turned around and there he was. He was parked right next to me, he was standing right there. So it didn't take me but a minute. I reached into my pocket. I pulled out a $20 bill, and, and I just said to him, hey, saw you were having trouble back there. Will this help out? And the man just looked at me and just said, oh, this will make all the difference in the world. Now, the guy from my small group, he said, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing, John, I would have given him anything that day that he needed. If he'd asked me for more, I'd have given him more. If he'd asked me for anything in that moment, I would have given it to him because I knew in that moment, that was my Holy Spirit nudge. That was my Holy Spirit nudge to be Jesus to somebody. And I looked at my small group guy on Zoom and, and I said, and I can tell you right now, because I know your heart. I said, and you were thinking in that moment, this scripture of past uh, or this scripture passage, you were thinking about Jesus and the sheep and the goats. He says, Oh yeah, I was. You got it exactly. Now, all of you who are watching this are going, sheep and goats. There weren't any sheep and goats in the Walmart parking lot. And there weren't. But here from the Gospel of Matthew, this is what Jesus says in chapter 25, verse 31. When he, meaning the Son of Man, finally arrives, blazing in beauty and all his angels with him, the Son of Man will take his place on his glorious throne. Then all the nations will be arranged before him, and he will sort the people out, much as a shepherd sorts out sheep and goats, putting sheep to his right and goats to his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, enter you who are blessed, blessed by my father. Take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's ready for you. The world's foundation. And here's why. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was homeless. You gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. And then those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you thirsty or give you a drink? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will say, I'm telling you this solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. And you did it to me. Now, I just got to say, you and I, we see people every day, whether it's in person, whether it's through the window, looking out to the neighborhood, or, or whether it's just on TV, we see people every day. But do we really see people every day? 
Do we really see Jesus in them every day? In that church in the book of Acts, they saw Jesus every day. And they demonstrated God's goodness to each other every day. They recognized that everyone was invited on this sacred journey with Jesus. It didn't matter if they were homeless or sick or naked or hungry or lonely. They were all invited. There were no questions about their condition or why they had ended up that way. There was just welcome. In that moment, when the man from my small group met that man in the Walmart parking lot, both of their lives were changed. They both responded to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And when we enter into this journey, this sacred journey, responding to the prompting of the Spirit in that way, our lives are changed. And the church, the church of Jesus is made known and real again. In those moments, the church that we find in that chapter in the book of Acts, we are once more all believers and disciples as Jesus is lifted up. So here, here are the questions that I have, questions that I have for my life today, and, and maybe, maybe they're questions that you have for your life today as well. That first question I got that I got is, is, is this one. What do people say about my life, about your life, about our life as the church together? What's our witness? Do people look at us like they look at the church in Acts and say, look at them. See how they're devoting themselves to each other. See how God's presence is being made known. See how devoted they are to following Jesus. Or do they say something else? Do they look at us and do they see that our lives are being changed? We aren't who we once were. And yet, we're not who we're exactly going to be. Do they look at us and can they see Jesus lifted up? I mean, these are some of the questions that are going through my mind. Maybe they're not exactly your questions. But I got this challenge for us. Lift up Jesus today. Take him with you wherever you go today. Make him known today. Live your life as a changed life today that others can see in you the journey that they want to be on to. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for the journey of faith that we're on. We give you thanks that your spirit nudges us, invites us, and surprises us along the way. God, we, we admit that sometimes we forget whose journey it is and who's on it with us. But today, God, may we look around and may we see you in those who are journeying with us, who are going before us, and who are coming after us. May this be forever true. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all. And find me here, Lord, as you draw me near, desperate for you. I'm desperate for you and I surrender and drench my soul as 
mercy and grace unfold I hunger and thirst I hunger and thirst With arms stretched wide I know you hear my cry Speak to me now Speak to me now And I surrender I surrender I want to know you more I want to know you more I surrender the truth, that we want to be a people that can surrender, that can walk alongside God and one another in this community of faith, get to be side by side and get to give all of who we are up to a God that loves us, knows us, and meets us just where we are. And that act of surrendering both in community and to our God to give everything of who we are is a practice the church has been doing for thousands of years, a moment that we mark in our service called the passing of the peace. A moment where we surrender everything that we brought in, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we meet with those in our community. If we have some beef with someone in our community, we meet them when we share peace to say that we are together. If we have joy with someone in our community, we meet them to say God is in that as well. But we come and we pass and share God's peace that he has given us and share that with those around us. And so I invite you, whether it's a text or in the comments or an old letter or a phone call, whatever it is, to just share a sign of peace with those around you. And while you do that, I wanna take a moment just to share some exciting next steps as we head into Holy Week, as we get to prepare for a lot of exciting things that are coming up here in the life of Church of the Shepherd as we prepare for the celebration that is on Easter. And the first one is coming up on April 1st. It's Holy Thursday. From 5 to 8 p.m. here at our church, at Church of the Shepherd, in our campus, we're going to have a guided come-as-you-can Holy Thursday experience. So you don't have to come for three hours, but you can come anytime between 5 and 8, and there will be stations that you can experience 
from the table to the garden, the story that prepares us for Easter, all that happens on this Holy Thursday. And so we invite you to come to join us. You can actually register for that and let us know you're coming so that we can prepare for you as well. But it will be distance. It'll be sanitized. It will be a perfect experience to prepare yourself for the coming celebrations on Easter. And the following day for Good Friday, we'll have an online only experience that you can get on demand anytime during the day, but premieres at 7 p.m. And you can join us for this service as we gather together for this Good Friday in preparation for the celebration that comes on Easter. And then Easter, the big celebration, we want to share with you what that is going to be like. And that's going to be 9 and 11, both online and in person. You can worship with us for Easter. And so you can do that by coming online and you can worship with us in our online community. We want to see you worship with us and celebrate with us in that way. But if you're looking to worship in person, or maybe you know someone else that is 9 and 11 outside here at Church of the Shepherd, we're going to be gathering together for an Easter celebration in person. And we hope that you will come and join us and celebrate either online or in person as we celebrate the culmination of the sacred journey that we've been walking together through this season. And so, friends, we're so excited that we get to worship together. We look forward to the celebration that comes through Holy Week and Easter, and we look forward to seeing you back here again next week. And I'll pass it over to John as he sends us out with a blessing. Friends, it has been good to worship with you here in this day, in this time, and in this place. And I pray that wherever you are on your journey today, whether it be on the mountaintop or the valley, whether it be with a few or with many, Wherever you are on your journey, may you know that the one who loves you most loves you always and is not only with you now, but goes forward with you for tomorrow. Go forth in his name. Amen. Amen.